lesson. Uh, I have a Facebook group for Movement Lesson for Parents and Practitioners. I do Facebook Lives quite regularly on topics like this, learning how to walk. I wanted my clients, my, my parents, my practitioners to see the foundational movements needed in walking. I hope you enjoy this. If you need more of my Facebook Lives, please, first of all, subscribe so when you, you get the notifications that they're up here on YouTube when I do put them on. But guess what? There's a lot more on my group. So please join me over at Facebook, Movement Lessons for Parents Practitioner. I'd love to have you. I'd love to help your child. Thanks. So, I'm going to show you. I'm, gonna, I'm being a big baby. I'm going to be showing you right now on how to walk. Uh, more and more, again, you guys are needing help and assistance. I get it. I want you to understand those foundational movements. And this is what you get at Movement Lesson. It's those, those nitty gritties, those that details, that, that attention to detail. Um, you cannot just put a child in and walking. So I'm just going to give it a second to make sure everybody is in. Um, people are looking to sign on for training. Uh, the new training starts in August. We don't have the page up yet. I'm going to get that up probably by next week. We're going to have all the dates spilled out into 2022 probably. Not including travel, because I don't know what my travel is. Um, we are translating into Russian. We're going to start segment one by July 25th. I will have a landing page up by mid ne next week as well. Um, so get excited for that, especially for those that, that missed it. I'm going to take now all the training and put it into Russian. That's going to be my, my first um, investment um, into the translations. And let me tell you, it's a lot of work, and I have a lot of people involved in that. So uh, that takes a bit longer because I can't just whip up an email um, because my Russian is not good. I was taking Duolingo to learn Russian, and then they started asking me to spell it, and I so wasn't paying attention. Like, I was just doing it auditory, like, you know, I can say, it's on the shelves, spasibo, but uh, when they started to say for me to spell uh, it's a taxi, and I was like, what? <laughs> well, I wasn't paying attention. So I don't know if I could do Cyrillic, so it's hard. Um, anyway, when you're learning how to talk, <laughs> I'm learning how to talk, when you're learning how to walk, this is hard. I shouldn't be doing a Facebook Live with Felipe. Felipe and I just had this uh, conversational giggle. Um, I've set this up, my studio, up like a, um, sort of like a couch. I want to explain the cubic bone strike, going into crawling, going into crawling onto the couch and coming down. You will never see a toddler, let's say, come down this way, right? What they will do, and they'll come here, this is where that pubic bone strike comes into play and gravity, and they start looking for the floor. It's one of the things I'm working on this week, and that's why I wanted to do this kind of a movement um, to show you where they're coming down. When they're coming down here, it is not with a fall, right? This is where, again, that pubic bone comes into play. They, it drops like a plumb line, and they can go in, and they can do these things, and again, they're right there with it. And, and so forth. They're always using that couch for the pubic bone strike as they start it, and they're starting to cruise and going into those things. Yes, a child falls down, but really not that much. They're not concerned with falling. You do not go around a typical child and make sure that they're okay. One of the things, like with Graham, uh, again, he lost all these abilities, but when he was starting to do it again, he literally would be here, right? And that was my complaint to doctors, that he was falling like a drunk. That just to me wasn't normal. And this was back in the day where I didn't know anything. And, 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 and also too, do you see how I have ten, you shouldn't see a child pull up, right? Do you see where my pelvis is? There's no involved with this. And they're coming here. Now, where's my vision, right? This is where, again, my vision course is coming in. I'm after functional movement. I'm after functional vision. You have to start looking at all these things. It's not about just making your child perpendicular and that they're going to walk. A lot of things went into them to start learning that, and that's the these little movements that you put into it. And a lot of you are going to start getting them into segment three. If I go this way first, where is my vision? I'm not seeing you anymore, right? And now I'm here. I have to remember to do what I'm doing, but I'm a baby, so I might forget. This is where a lot of children start to progress. You think they're standing, 
but they want to come here because that's where my eyes are going. No difference if any of you've learned how to ride a motorcycle. So I have my motorcycle license. You learn first thing in training, if you do it proper training, if your bike's gonna go where your eyes are going. It's the same thing with your baby. So when you're seeing the crawling, especially here, I just worked with, with Katie's little boy and doing these kind of things. Again, I can't see you. So I'm bringing my leg up here, literally this is where a bear club crawl comes from, right? But also too, now I'm gonna give you a butt shot. <laughs> Look at how far off my head is from my pelvis. So for me to come down and go all the way over here, I need really good balance. And babies don't have good balance. This is why they're fast and they're low to the ground, but they don't fall. They can go around and up and you're not going to see a fall. So that's one of the things you're starting to look for in crawl. It's not that they can crawl, but they should be able to do, and let's see if I can still do these moves, that's why I put the mats down, but they can come around and they go right up again. I didn't fall, I rolled and came back up again, right? And there's differences to that. And that's why even from here, a baby can come down here and they're playing and they're going around and they're crawling underneath, right? But then they're up again. And that's what you start to look for. And that's called momentum, right? A lot of our munchkins, they don't have momentum. So this is where we covered in the rolling over course, which I really like, what I call the grabber. That I'm going down, but I'm grabbing onto something because I'm preventing my fall. No difference than your grandmother. And I hate to put it like that, but I'm trying to get more visual guys for you to see what you need to work on. So I might come here and I'm grabbing, Again, where's my vision? And I've still fallen down. And now I'm here because I'm so pooped to do anything. And now I've, and the falling stops the process. Where if you're rolling and you're here in your belly and you're coming back and then you're back up on all fours and then you're here, right? Those are what I call transitioning skills. I can transition no problem from belly to front and rolling around and up and down. And that's where, again, a child doesn't suddenly learn a skill and hang out. Now, what a child starts to do, which I don't have here, they go up like an airplane. So usually there's a pillow first, and they have a little mini crawl. But this is why I set this up. This is a big airplane for me. So then they're here. They're gonna go as much as their belly as they can get on here. So that's why I have a good belly. And they're going here. Now they're starting to walk. This is your pubic bone strike iliac crest, but that's what's going to get me up, right? And I'm going here, I'm automatically on that pubic bone strike, and that's why it's a strike. I can fall down. Anything here, right? I'm right on my pubic bone. I haven't fallen down, but if I'm here, sorry, I'm going back. No, no. you know what I mean? This is now, a, this is a big fall, right? So for me to, to fall down, again, to come down, and I'm coming back. See the pubic bone? I'm not planking. Now this is a plank. I can't see you. I can't breathe. You know what I mean? To talk. That's a plank. Pubic bone. So they're here, and they're going around. They're just right up. They're right down. See the strike? That's what's needed. And then if I want to get down around again, now I'm here, and I'm going here again. Sorry, I'm huffing and puffing, but I'm 55 for a reason. So, when your child is starting to cruise, their belly bump, you're doing all of this, you will not see a child back here like this. This is not cruising, this is, I hope I don't fall down. Why are they like this? Because they're getting far enough away so they don't face plant here smart little buggers, right? But if I'm here, you know, they like to start going upside down. They're starting to get into their spinning milestones. The spinning milestones really show up more at about two and a half to five. But again, there's momentum milestones that have to happen. So they start going into cruising. They're doing this. Now it's with that belly bump that I can start going away but you will not see a child step backwards. This is, see, look at where I'm at. 
So now another thing that they do too to get up, the squatting is poor. They're here. You see how my hands are free? So now if I fall down, I go straight. Again, it's not a fall. I'm just going down and I'm going up. Right? So again, I'm right here. I'm in that same position. So I'm here, again, a squat. My hands are free. When you see somebody trying to, and worse, trying to pull themselves up, where's the vision? And so they might get up here, and they're huffing and puffing the same way. Now they can't get down. This is, again, where you start seeing, oh, my baby can stand up, but they can't get back down. Why? Because they're here. And they know darn well, because their pelvis isn't moving, they had crawl issues, they had rolling over issues. Now it's really starting to show up and they literally have to go here. Now I can do that with a diaper, but if I did that for my tall table, that fall is gonna start hurting. There's gonna be a hurt somewhere in there that's going to start preventing that level. So again, when I'm up here, oh, let's see if I can do this without killing myself. So from here, Again, you'll see kids dive on the couch, and they'll come down, right, and they're, they're there. But that wasn't a fall, right? Sleep is having fun with me. <laughs> but otherwise, though, this is a hard fall, and what's worse, this is a harder fall. You know, that's not what you see a kid do. I'm not saying the child's never going to fall down, but really, they do it in a way and that's a pubic bone strip. And it's just full on. So again, they just go right back up. They're here. This has nothing to them. That's when you're like, aren't you tired? Aren't you going to do? And then they'll just be back again. Now it will start to happen as well. And it's really overlooked. And that's why a sensible bunch of table is this. Now they'll start going upside down. Right? And they'll be like little acrobats. Because they're playing with gravity and they're really starting to propel that pelvis, right? A three-year-old just should be hanging like a bat off your couch. So they go up and they spin around and they're here. Ooh, now they're really excited because now they got some leverage. But that's a long way down. So what they'll do is again, they'll start this way and that's where they get this. They love this position, right? And they're just playing. They feel like they're flying. Ooh. You know, it's the parents that have a problem with all of that. <laughs> and, and they're here, and then, then they start going into these kind of moves where they can come down, right? They still have a pubic bone strike. They're still here. They really haven't flanked because they wouldn't stop like this, like I'm doing to talking. They'll either go into like a somersault, which I am not going to do, or again, I'm right here and I get right off. I did not fall off the couch, right? But you'll, when your child, and I'm not saying they'll never fall off the couch, please don't let them do it when, if you feel you, you have to watch them. You really, you just look at them and go, how can you make it to 20? You know what I mean? Because they can, they can manage all these skills. We don't go from sitting to crawling to walking. This is so important. If your child is physically unable to do these skills, you have to offer it. Movement lesson is a great way to do it. If you're not doing movement lesson, whoever's working with your child, everything that I did there, look at this. It's not core strength. I have core movements. I can move better than most of you out there, including your children, and that's why you come to me. So with that, like again, the temptation, and that's where seniors get it too. This is why, again, I have an anti-aging that most people don't have, right? I can still grab my feet and roll down and come around. Let's see if I can do it. And I'm right here. I can do all those skills. Now, I don't have to do it on a daily basis, but I know because I play with your child that if I touch them in that way, I know how to do the movement. I wanted to take this time for you to just understand what it takes into walking, vision development, functional movement. It's fun stuff. And we have parks closed down right now, even for your typical children. They need to have this kind of movement environment.
gravity and the floor is 360 degrees. Now, I can look at anything right now. That fell. This fell, right? I should never be falling. I was going to do a stand and drop. I can do it, but yeah, that's not the point. But even this, when they dive bomb into the couch, right? And their feet are up. They love this stuff. This is the stuff that should happen. What, Mom? You know, and you're like, get off the couch. I'm not on the couch. And get your feet off the couch. You hear it all the time, how they can move around their bodies like this, right? And then that they can just get up and come around and spin. All that is important. Do you see how I'm not committed to a floor? The floor happens, but I move 360 degrees. I don't float to the ceiling, that I get. But when I'm coming up, I've never committed to this, to this, or to this. I'm, a, I'm an independent person moving around it. I want you to start looking at movement like that. This is what's important to movement. You want to work with someone that can move the way they, you're, you're way, wanting your child to move. No difference, I've studied under Mr. Norris. I, you know, I do karate and I've done under Chuck Norris. Um, for those of you who know that, he's an amazing person. Um, and he's my grandmaster. Now he wasn't my personal trainer, but he's my grandmaster and I worked with Mr. Mundy. When I wanted to learn karate, you know what I mean? I didn't go to Joe's Doho. I went to where I was going to get a technique that suited my needs. I want you to understand how movement's supposed to work. If you think you're gonna stand your child up like this, oh, don't fall, don't fall, don't fall, don't fall. Oh, 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 you can't see, I can't see you, right? I can't look at you right now. Look at where my, you know, now, now take a step, you know, versus having these kind of movements. This kind of movement, again, here, 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 all have, again, an organized plumb line coming up, coming around. Now, this is where my femoral torsion, I can only do it through the left. Um, I know what it's like to the right, but this is where I'm going to have that gap because where my femur is to my knee. So with that, I might need a little assistance, but I know. The child doesn't know when to get assistance. Okay? So I hope this was helpful. Do we have any questions? No questions. No questions. Okay, so this is what you need to have in your portfolio of movement for learning how to walk, right? All of these movements I just did are a complete necessity for learning how to walk, whether you're 55 or you're 12 months old. You will see those skills need to be exhibited. When we start losing these skills, when we're 55, or they're not presenting when we're 12 months old, when we're eight months old, all of those kind of skills. And that's why people are coming to me, and I know a lot of pediatricians say, oh, there's something to worry about. Just because a child's cute and has two eyes and two ears. All of these movements I just did, I don't care if your kid's getting ready for the Olympics or just getting ready for preschool. These were all valid movements. Every one of you should be able to do these movements without being taught. I know that's not the case, but I just want you to consider movement is a vocabulary, just like your vocabulary in English. A third grader can't write a Harry Potter novel. Not only do they not have life experience, they don't have the vocabulary, right? That's why a third grader too, you don't want them to be your security guard or drive your car. Skills come with time, I get that. But some things are not worth waiting for and waiting for your child to develop. I'm just, that just, I wish I'd known better. It's not worth the wait, you know? There's no reason why you just can't be proactive for any of your children. That, that this, what I just did, anyone would benefit from. So with that, I hope you enjoyed it. See you later.